Welcome back to the channel. Well, with the addition of MultiView to Microsoft Flight Simulator's upcoming Sim Update 10, there still seems to be confusion by some about how this is better than using NVIDIA Surround or AMD's Ifinity. In this video, I'd like to explain the difference and why the true MultiView is a much better solution. If you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of VR, so you may ask, why are you even messing with monitors anymore? While I'll admit that flat screens can never compare with the immersion of VR, there are some things that this does better, namely pilot training, where you need to get your hands on the controls, and the visual exterior scenery is not quite as critical, especially in instrument training. While Microsoft's first attempt at multi-view is not uh, is user-friendly and capable as X-Plane and Prepared offered, it really does add a lot to the game. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate some of the problems with Surround or Ifinity and the advantages of multi-view. I'll also give you some information that will help you figure out how to set up your multiple view setup when Sim Update 10 is officially released. So to get started, let's look at how the NVIDIA Surround and AMD Affinity work. So the way Surround works is it takes the monitors that comprise your desktop and combines them into a single virtual monitor. Then your simulator can create graphics as though it was just a single monitor. Then Surround splits that into three individual images which can be fed to the separate monitors. So what's the problem? Well first a little bit of the basics. When you run your simulator on a single monitor the goal is to make the displayed field of view which is set in your simulator equal to the physical field of view perceived by your eye. When the displayed field of view and the physical field of view viewed by your eye are the same everything looks the correct size. Obviously, the physical field of view is controlled by your eye distance from the monitor. This ideal eye distance can be calculated with this formula. As an example, using a 55-inch television with a width of 48 inches and a field of view of 45 degrees, as in our example, the correct viewing distance to have a 45-degree field of view physically is 58 inches. You can see as field of view increases, the correct eye distance moves closer and closer to the screen, while width of the monitor as it increases causes you to move further away. So with this basic concept, let's now take a look at the multiple monitor setups using surround and multi-view. So let's briefly return to our previous example where we have a 45 degree field of view displayed on a single monitor and the eye distance set to have a 45 degree physical field of view. So let's take that single monitor and add two additional monitors left and right on the same plane. Because this is how Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane or Prepared sees your NVIDIA surround virtual monitor. To triple the 45 degree field of view we had with the single monitor, we would need a 135 degree field of view on our surround monitor. Using the previous eye distance formula, you can see 30 inches would be the approximate distance from the monitors to make the full 135 degrees at the correct angle. You can see here how that compares to the single monitor viewing distance it's uh, almost twice as close. This creates a few problems. First in this example using 55 inch monitors the 30 inch distance really doesn't leave that much room for placing your simulator and controls in front between the monitor and your correct eye position. Second you can see that any field of view, total field of view greater than 135 is going to bring you even closer to the screen and exacerbate the previous problem. So you're pretty much limited to 135, which isn't that great for a field of view, especially if you want to be able to fly looking out the wing line. Finally, anyone who's ever watched TV from a very oblique angle, like this 135 degree, would require making it at 67 and a half degrees off the axis of the 
TV knows that the the edges would be very difficult to see. Interestingly, if you can overcome all these issues, the actual image that's displayed and that you would see if your eye was in the correct position would be geometrically correct. The simulator assumes that the screen is flat and it modifies the view by stretching it as it moves outward on wide field of views in order to make it look correct when viewed from that oblique angle. Here you can see extra tall letters that look normal when you look out at the oblique angle towards the word ahead further down the road. This same effect causes the stretched image towards the outer limits of a wide monitor to look normal when viewed from the center position. Unfortunately many simmers pull back the side monitors at some angle and move themselves back to have better viewing of the monitors and also to have more room for their sim gear and this introduces all kinds of problems as we'll see later. So let's see how multi-view works. Let's go back to our original single monitor setup with a 45 degree field of view and let's rake back the side monitors 45 degrees from the flat orientation they started out with. Multi-view allows us to rotate the camera left and right and create separate views for each of the monitors. Since the monitors are rotated by the same amount as the field of view on each monitor, they form a continuous view. Left, right, and you can see all views are perpendicular and centered on the monitor. And this gives us a total field of view of 135 degrees again, but over surround it has some real advantages. We now have plenty of room to place our SIM equipment between the eye position and the screen. And we no longer are looking at screens at an oblique angle. So we have good image quality on LCD screens. Unfortunately, the beta implementation of a multi-view on Microsoft Flight Simulator is not that granular. All you can do is set the left and the right bounds for the view. In this case, minus 67 and a half and plus 67 and a half, adding up to 135 degrees. And Microsoft Flight Simulator divides the views over the three monitors. Unfortunately, the only way to set a somewhat precise field of view is by controlling the zoom factor of the cockpit camera. Through some experimentation, we've come up with a chart and graph that might help you correlate the zoom factor and the field of view. You can either interpolate on the table or refer to the graph to find an approximate zoom required to get the field of view that you require. For example, 60 degrees go over and it looks like it's about 68 percent zoom. You might want to disable the mouse scrolling on the camera uh, so that on your mouse so that you don't inadvertently change the zoom while you're flying. Hopefully a Sobo will come up with something a little bit more precise for the future but all I can say in the meantime is it's easy to set up and it works as long as your monitors are all the same size. Next I'd like to show you some screenshot comparisons between surround and multi-view and show you why once you try multi-view you'll never want to be back in the surround world again even if it does take a little more computing power for multi-view. So I'd like to show you a screen capture from uh, actually from X-Plane. I used X-Plane because it has the ability to remove the aircraft structure so that you can get a better view of what we're talking about here. The top image of course is surround and the bottom is a multi-view image. Now what I wanted to point out in this slide is you can see the numbers. The multi-view looks much closer because we said earlier that in the surround situation we're much closer to the screen. So to get true scale we have to have it smaller. On the other hand towards the boundaries you can see things on the perimeter look very much larger in the surround compared to multi-view. And I'll look at a close-up to get a better feel for that. That's the stretching effect that's required to make the image look right at a very oblique angle. Now if you'll focus on the areas that are uh, surrounded with a dotted orange line, I'll show you a close-up and it'll make it even clearer to see that stretching effect I'm talking about. 
Now on the left you can see the two trees and then in the bottom image, the multi view, you can see the trees are much narrower and that's what they really look like. The same thing with the right below the trees, the, the taxiway sign, you can see how much it's stretched, probably almost three times the length. Also the building behind the trees, you can see the garage doors and the total width of that white building, how much wider it is. Also above that you can see a tower sticking up that not only uh, is much wider but it looks shorter it's not but it looks shorter because it's so much wider but the aspect is all messed up if you look to the right I zoomed in again on those trees and the taxiway sign and to show you not only is it larger but it's moved more towards the center of the screen so that when you view it at the angle it looks right like I said there's nothing wrong with this this is made perfectly for looking at a flat wide screen but most people don't do it that way and I didn't do it that way. And the end result is when you do this you find that objects uh, towards the edges look much closer than they are. Their motion is much faster and the runway lights just look like they're screaming by. It's just so unrealistic and once you've seen multi-view which looks lifelike it's really difficult to go back to surround. It just doesn't work. So the bottom line is if uh, things don't change at all before SIM Update 10 comes out, this will still be a very workable system that I'll be happy to use. If you have three equally sized monitors, it really works quite well. And even though it's difficult to set the zoom, if you do move the zoom, the sizing might change, but the uh, views are split evenly on the three monitors and it looks just fine. So, all in all, an easy to use system. It could be better, but it's definitely a plus for flat screen simming. Now, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to show you the setup I use. I have three 50 inch monitors that are quite old now and due for replacement. The costs have come way down. You can pick up for three or four hundred dollars 55 inch monitors, and that's really the sweet size, I think, now. I like to go with a 60 degree field of view after five years or so messing around with this on X-Plane, I found that's kind of a good spot to be. That was actually the default uh, field of view on the single monitor X-Plane setup. And this gives you a 180 degrees total field of view, which I've found is pretty good. You can see out your wing line on most aircraft. You can see the leading quarter of your wing. You can also see really well on downwind to fly a visual approach. It's even good for flying on the wing and basic formation flying. In Microsoft Sim Update 10 this means setting a one add-on monitor to minus 90, the other to plus 90 giving you that 180 degree field of view spread over the three monitors. So I did the calculations using 55 inch televisions you can see with a 60 degree field of view per TV with 180 total view the D, the distance your eye needs to be out from the monitor is 41.5 uh, inches and this puts you right on line with the trailing edge of both side monitors. This setup also gives you a back opening between the monitors twice the width of the monitor in the front which gives plenty of room for guests to come and observe and join you in the simulator. If you want to be able to see further back on your wing some people have had success using 70 degrees field of view which would give you a 210 degree total field of view and others have tried setting the monitor in the front for even 90 and having a basically a box but it's quite narrow in the back to get in and out and the downside of both of those choices is that you keep moving closer and closer to the monitor uh, to get the right viewing angle and that uh, causes you sometimes to run out of room for your rudder pedals and yoke and any other monitors and things that you want to use now I've created a little spreadsheet that I'll somehow link in the description below uh, that shows you kind of the basic layout and allows you to do some of the calculations that you need to do if you don't want to deal with the math. allows you to put in a uh, diagonal uh, of the TV and calculates the width for you and then when you put a field of view in it calculates the eye distance and then the total back opening distance and you can experiment with this and you can see uh, if your layout will work 
you can measure how far, how close you can get the screen to uh, your sim setup and see what works and uh, maybe work backwards and buy the monitors. So this is just a, a, just a little tool that I'll post and you can take a look at it and you can just play around with the numbers and see what you think as far as doing this. But I, I do encourage you that if you're not going to get involved at VR, I definitely would look into three monitors because the price is right. And uh, I'm running this on a an older computer. I use my best computer for VR, and I'm running a 2080 Ti and a uh, I think it's a 10th generation uh, CPU. And I'm getting very decent frame rates, no stuttering. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it. And I'm not only running the three monitors, but I have a system called a pluggable. I have a a video on that that allows me through USB C to run the other two monitors that I'm using on my panel. So I'm very happy with the way it's working now under Microsoft uh, and the pop-outs just work great. If you'd like to dig a little deeper into the subject, I did a video about five years ago when Multiview first hit X-Plane 11 uh, and it has a lot of good information that goes in a little deeper than what I've talked about here today. So you might feel free to look at that. I'll link that above. Don't be misled by the X-Plane 11 uh, title. Uh, most of the information is applicable to any simulator using multiple monitors. So in summary, there are just some applications where 2D simming on flat screens is the best solution. And I really think uh, that the addition of multi-monitor is going to make this even better. We love the scenery and the new airplanes that are being added daily to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, I hope you'll take advantage of this. I'd also like to thank you for watching. I'd appreciate if you would be a subscriber if, if you find my content helpful. Also, if you'd share these videos with your simming friends, and I'd also love your comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you on my next video.